During Soviet times, Russian was not only compulsory in schools, but became the de facto language of communication for commercial and government business. The post-Soviet era ushered in efforts to revive the use of Ukrainian in the public sphere, and the government has declared it to be the country's official language. The results have been mixed. In today's Kiev, Russian is more often the language of business, whereas Ukrainian is used for government transactions and education. Some estimates put the number of native Ukrainian speakers in Kiev around 30%, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Residents often speak both languages to a high degree of fluency, and it's not unusual for a conversation to wade liberally between the two. Assuming, however, that you only have a limited amount of time to invest in learning a new language, then the wisest choice is squarely Russian. Speak it and you've got plenty of company. Around 145 to 170 million people know Russian as their primary language. Once those who have learned it as a secondary language are counted, the numbers rise to about 285 million. Because Russian shares a Slavic base with several other languages, such as Ukrainian, learners automatically acquire a strong linguistic connection with much of Central Europe and parts of Northern Asia. How difficult a language is to learn, of course, greatly depends on your starting point. Even though Russian is also Indo-European, English speakers sometimes consider the language disorienting due to its lack of concrete sentence order. It can feel like a moving target. Words change position and form according to their function, their number, their gender, and so on and so forth. The flip side of this is that the language is extremely flexible, allowing for very subtle translations, playful rhymes, and famously rich literature. The Russian alphabet consists of 33 Cyrillic letters. Expatriates find that learning the alphabet, even if they don't pursue the language in full, is extraordinarily useful. I don't think it's not the script. People get put off by learning Russian, I think, from the Cyrillic script, which I found easy to learn. I can read it brilliantly. Yeah. That's not a problem. It's the grammar. Once you get past a few base first lessons where you learn, you know, hello, how are you, my name is, the real basics, and you start on the grammar, and then, whoa. You can get by with Pigeon Russian. I mean, you can get, I, I, again, I would encourage anyone to learn it because it will empower them as well. They speak a bit of the language. You need to understand labels in supermarkets on things. If you're buying meat, it helps if you can read the Cyrillic script. Some things are packaged in English and Russian, but mainly, well, Ukraine, mainly Ukrainian actually in Kiev. Um, if you, life is easier if you can speak. Um, it's great if you are able to speak Russian, but you do not need it to live a normal life in Kiev. If all you do is learn the very basics, hello and goodbye, and thank you and please, um, it makes an enormous difference. I think making a little effort in the local language makes everything better, and uh, a smile always helps. Very few signs outside of Kiev center are translated into English, so knowing the alphabet alone is a crucial first step when it comes to getting around. Expatriates who live in the city proper can usually get through their daily routine using English, and somewhat less often German. Most people in Kiev have learned English in school and are eager to get a chance to polish their foreign language skills. A great way to reciprocate is to learn some basic phrases. Just a couple of words will typically leave the average foreigner pocketing compliments on how good their Russian is. Here are just a few to get you started. Hello. Здравствуйте. Goodbye. До свидания. Please. Пожалуйста. Thank you. Спасибо. 